Hi everyone, so today the ISDM team are going to be talking about the ScreenBeam 1100 Plus device. Now this device is primarily a wireless presentation device, but can also be used as a wireless conferencing hub, as well as a digital signage player. In this video we'll talk about the different functions and what they look like in reality. The first function that I'll talk about is a wireless presentation functionality of the device. Now out of the box I'll be using a Windows PC here and the device does support Miracast connections so without the need for installing any applications out of the box I can hit Windows and K and see the ScreenBeam 1100P device as an option on my connected devices here. If you select that it will ask for a pin number which is displayed on the screen that is connected to the ScreenBeam device. Now this can be set to change every single connection for security reasons or if you wanted to as an organisation you could set that to be a static pin so it's the same on every connection completely up to you which one you choose. In this instance I'll choose the 5471 which is a randomly generated pin code. Once I've hit that in you can see that my PC is then transferred over to the screen that's connected to the device um, on duplicate mode. That mode can be changed here if you change projection mode you can choose to extend, disconnect our second screen only. Everything you'd expect to happen on a a wireless presentation occurs here so you've got your audio transfer as you can see here digital output is set to the screen beam 1100p automatically and anything you do on your screen will be duplicated on that screen there so i'll just disconnect from this session here and then discuss how we connect using the application that screen beam have developed so the second way to connect to the device wirelessly is using the screen beam conference app which is available at the website displayed here once downloaded and opened up on your laptop, if you're in the same proximity as the device, if you hit the project button only, what it'll do is open up your Miracast connections like it was in the first instance. Same methodology of connecting. Click the device you want to connect to. Pin number will display on the screen. Type in that and then it'll basically do the same thing as what was shown on the Miracast connection. Now, because it's just a wireless presentation screen sharing only, it's exactly the same functionality. The application is mostly going to be used for the conferencing uh, function, which we'll talk about next. But as you can see here, I'm connected. It tells me I'm presenting. You can min minimize that, and then you've got full control over your desktop, which will be duplicated on screen over here. Again, audio will be transmitted across using the screen beam as the digital output. And if you wanted to, you can again choose Windows K to change your projection mode. So as you've just seen, the function is exactly the same whether using the application or not when doing wireless presentation only, project is what they call it. The application is really used for the conferencing options, which is what we'll discuss next. At this point, it's worth mentioning that there is an option called MultiView, which you can enable on the web GUI of the device. We'll show you the web GUI later. Um, and MultiView basically enables up to four people to be able to present to the device at the same time. If they do that, then they'll get a quadrant of the screen per presentation. Um, but it's worth also mentioning that if this is active, then the conference inside of things won't be active. It's either a one or the other option at this stage. So that moves us on to the project and conference options. So here, if you want to use the ScreenBeam 1100P as a conferencing hub, you can project and conference option here. Um, same way of connecting, click on ScreenBeam 1100P. The projecting conference functions enables you to connect to the device and have your wireless presentation function, but also enables you to be able to use any peripherals that are connected to the device as your peripherals in calls such as Teams calls, Zoom calls, WebEx calls. As you can see here in the devices section in my Microsoft Teams settings, I'm able to select the speaker as the digital output screen beam 1100p and also the microphone as the in-room microphone screen beam virtual audio and then I'll go down to the video and I'll be able to choose the in-room camera um, option which is the Poly Studio USB here which I've got connected to one of the USB ports on the screen beam. So now you can see that I'm using the peripherals that are connected to the screen beam device as the peripherals on my laptop. So any Teams calls I have now will use the system that's in room as its conferencing system, audio and video. If you wanted to do a wide connection to the device, you can do this. The screen beam does have a HDMI ingest port. As you can see here, I've got a HDMI plugged into the laptop, which is plugged into the screen beam and that is being duplicated on screen. 
Now this will be supported on Windows and MacBooks, however, will only just be for sharing. It won't incorporate the uh, conferencing side of things. So the final function that I'll talk about is the digital signage function of this device. So as you can see on the GUI of the device, we've got a digital signage tab. It's worth mentioning that digital signage on these devices is only compatible with HTML5 based signage, which I think covers most websites. Um, ours is a HTML5 based website, so I am able to demonstrate this. Um, other websites, if they're not HTML5, you might have issues. To enable digital signage, you just hit the enable radio button here put in the host of the website on the URL here. It does give you some rules that it must match and what's not supported, what is supported. Um, the restart delay basically tells the device to start your signage 10 seconds, in this instance, 10 seconds after a connection is being disconnected. So if I've been presenting, that will put, take priority and digital signage will go away. When I stop presenting 10 seconds later, the digital signage will start. Um, digital signage update frequency, I'm gonna leave as no update digital signage volume I'm going to leave on mute. So if I hit apply there, are you sure you want to change these settings? Yes. And as you can see, after the settings have taken on the device, 10 seconds later, our website is displayed as a digital signage page. It's not interactive um, and there's just, there is a video embedded in the background of our website. This website isn't designed to be a digital signage website, so it's just used for demonstration only. If you wanted to use the device for a uh, digital signage device, you'd have to develop a website, I guess, that hosted HTML5 content in a way that you wanted to you know, display your content on screen. Um, but it's worth showing you how that works. It's really good, the refresh rate's really good, and it will just constantly play until somebody comes and connects to the device, which I'll just show you now, just to show you what happens um, when you do connect back up, when digital signage is playing. So you can see again, as before, I've connected via Miracast, a code comes up on screen, if I hit that, it will take over the device and now it's back into your wireless presentation mode. As you can see now it's duplicating my screen. And then if I was to disconnect using the disconnect button, 10 seconds after that disconnect, as we've set it in the website, uh, in the web GUI, 10 seconds later the digital signage will load again, as it has now. So. That's the digital signage function, it's really cool. Um, might need some developers to create a HTML5 website that is you know, fluid and constantly moving, or you could just have static image on screen if it was a, a restaurant uh, menu or something like that. You could just have a HTML5 based website with that uh, menu on screen and it will just display as digital signage forever. And that's the Screen Beam 1100 Plus device. As you can see, it's a really good wireless presentation device, but can also be really well used as a wireless conferencing hub, and could also be really well used as a digital signage player. If you've got any questions, please do reach out to the team. We'll see you on the next one.